So people always wonder when they're going to die, and knowing when would maybe give you an incentive to do things you typically wouldn't before. It's a sense of uncertainty that is so interesting to me. Everyone has a different belief as to what happens after, and most couldn't even be proven wrong. If you are curious when you're going to die, there's this really weird website, it's called Death Clock. You put in some brief information and boom, you have a date. We all know that there are a bunch of factors that can go into, you know, when you're going to die, but um, this is what I might look like that year. I'd be in my mid-50s. We could all agree that this site probably isn't too scientific. Anyone could be hit by a car or diagnosed with some terrible disease at any point in time. In fact, a man from New Zealand was actually diagnosed with a terminal cancer in that he was predicted that he only had about two months to live. Him and his wife sold everything that they had and took a lavish trip to Australia and Fiji. Uh, later, it was discovered that he would be just fine and actually he was cancer free. Uh, as terrible as it may seem for the couple, they did go on a pretty amazing trip of a lifetime and survive through um, what could have been cancer. To put it in perspective, would you rather have went on an adventure of a lifetime, carefree with the person you love, survived cancer, but then turned out in debt, or gone on an adventure and passed away at the end? The time it takes light to hit your eye and then be processed by the brain is about one centisecond. If a gunman standing about five feet away caught you off guard completely and shot, the round would take about 0.00417 seconds to get to you. You literally wouldn't even see it coming. What would you see and think about leading up to your death? You know it's coming. Your life is the all-time greatest thing that you have to ensure, and it's ending. Would your life flash before your eyes? The phenomena, actually, of the life flashing before your eyes uh, may actually be true. It's thought the last part of a person's brain to die is the part that holds memories. So when that's the only part left, there isn't really too much other things to think about. A first-hand encounter of this type of scenario uh, states the vividness of these memories. Most are pleasant, but the guilt and selfish acts uh, and the, these repercussions caused extreme so sorrow. Not only did they see the repercussions of their actions, but they also felt the repercussions of the pain of, from the people that they affected. Death caused by war has been going on for thousands of years. It's hard to really understand the level of destruction wars can cause. The level of destruction and death that occurs is something most young people don't really quite understand today. What they do understand is social media. A neat Twitter account you should all go follow is World War II tweets from 1942. They live tweet the war as it was happening today. Imagine a world where you could visit the ancestors' Facebook page and relive their life. What they ate for lunch on March 5th, 2006, these views people have on famous figures would be radically different. Abraham Lincoln may have hated some color or, you know, loved some food. The amount of data and media we are going to have on ourselves is going to be outstanding. The knowledge base sites like Facebook will be able to provide on our heritage will be astonishing. A site called What If looked at the population of Facebook. If Facebook were to start on a gradual decline like MySpace did in the past, there would be more dead profiles on Facebook than living ones by about 2055. If Facebook continued as it is today, by about 2130, there would be more dead people on Facebook than living people on Facebook. The one thing everyone who has ever lived and whoever will live has in common is that their lives will eventually come to an end. This may sound morbid, but death is what gives people an incentive to do things for both themselves and others. Even if there are some potions to make us not age, the earth is a very, very dangerous place. For example, lobsters don't really age in the same sense as they get like slower and they begin to ache like humans. Um, they just actually get larger. A lobster caught off the east coast was about 45 pounds and is believed to be about 144 years old. If that lobster had been caught earlier, it could have been eaten by Thomas Edison. One of the largest lobsters actually ever caught was weighed in at 52 pounds. I mean, how old was this thing? In the end, nobody really lives forever. Even if we could, there are always something out there that can bring an end to us. In a way, life is almost better that way. There is an incentive to move on and enjoy the people and things you love. In the next few hundred years, just remember that your great, great, great grandchildren may be looking back at what you left behind. 